Hi, good day, and welcome to my channel. Um, this is Iron Horse, and I'm a flat earther, and I'm proud of it. So, cheers. So, I'm going to start a series of videos. I've never done anything like this style before, so this is brand new to me. I'm not good at editing, so that's why I don't edit it. <laughs> that was an unintended joke, an IT joke. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I've got a, a Facebook channel I've been discussing Flat Earth on for many years. I've been discussing it on YouTube. I've been on debates. I've recently been on TikTok, so I intend to keep these to one hour segments maximum at a time so that I can also upload it to TikTok just as a bit of a backup and because TikTok does seem to be getting quite a popular following um, I'm not about I'm not in this for the money you know what I mean but at the same time I could do a heck of a lot of good if I had some money so you know I'm not trying to um beg or fundraise or anything like that that's not the point if I could spend more time doing this for the start You'll see where I'm coming from. I've got a brain in my head and I've got some massive ideas for how we can make the world a better place for everybody. But in the meantime, I find that Flat Earth is actually the um, the catalyst, the, the changing tipping point, if you will, from where we've gone from the past for the suppression and the, you know, a lot of historical wrongs. And I believe we can right those wrongs by being united in something we all agree on that the mainstream, the powers that should not be, don't want us to come together on. And Flat Earth, I believe, is that catalyst, which is why I'm so passionate about it. I've always been um, a nature lover and passionate about the world I live upon I'm getting a ring in my ears, so I'm already being bombarded. Um, oh, sorry. No paranoia. That must be the last feelings of it. Um, <laughs> I honestly think that if we can come together on a united front where we all believe that the powers that should not be, should not be, that they are stealing from us, that they are enslaving us, you know, we should have more freedoms. We should be able to grow whatever plants we want. And that's one of my biggest things is I'm going to invest my money eventually once I become um, financially enough stable to start growing hemp. It used to provide 80% of the world's tradable goods. The diesel engine was designed to run off pure hemp oil. We make paper canvas the dutch word for cannabis is canvas so all our paintings all our bibles everything was made on canvas ropes and sails first thing cook did when he reached australia was plant hemp cannabis sativa and didn't have much thc in it back then because it wasn't grown strictly for medicinal purposes whereas today many people who have found benefits from the plant realize that the medicinal benefits are also outstanding Many of our medicines prior to 1930, when it was first made illegal as some kind of obscure Mexican tobacco, were cannabis-based. So it is the number one thing to save the world. That's my goal. So meanwhile, we have to come together on something. So I'm making a series of videos. I'm going to take as long as they take, you know. So I'm going to do them in one-hour segments, stop and have a break, do another hour segment. And so it's going to start here, so I'll put my glasses on so I can read, because as I say, I've never done it this way before, and when I've got my laptop that far away, I actually do need glasses. So I'm going to switch the camera, and each time I do this, I'm going to have to adjust it slightly. So we can see that this is on a Facebook group. Um, it's called Flat Earth vs. Sphere Earth Discussion. And I believe the one that I've managed to click on first is... Um, Gian De Video, and I hope I pronounced his name correctly. Um, we can sort of, I'm yep. Yeah, I'll do this. I'll read through everything. So I'll shift my seat a bit so I can see because the camera is in my way. 
but the globe can be debunked easily using philosophy of mathematics. The foundation of globe theory is mathematics, specifically spherical trigonometry, which is non-Euclidean and does not abide to Euclid's optics, also known as the laws of perspective. Euclid makes the assumption that light rays are parallel. Light rays are always divergent and never parallel, but only appear parallel due to the geometry of human vision. He is still correct and we can forgive Euclid because he was studying the geometry of vision and not the science behind photons. However, spherical trigonometry is superimposed over normal trig and makes simulated and incorrect assumptions about paths of light. Spherical trigonometry, in reference to globe theory, uses the principles of elliptic geometry where light paths converge as opposed to diverge but appear parallel. In regard to, in regard to globe theory, non-Euclidean trigonometry stimulates the idea of a sphere. It presupposes that light takes paths that it does not take in the real world because the model is a Gnostic science that attempts, attempts to prove itself to be true by creating a hyper-reality through mathematics. In principle, the proof is that whatever answer is being derived through mathematics is reference to globe theory is following inconsistent logic and is not based on the laws of perspective and assumes light does the opposite thing that it actually does. Research Euclid's optics spherical trig hyperbolic geometry and so of course I have to do this I have to go into all comments which is frustrating and I'm not going to go into every single last comment because that could take forever and ever but um, we can just take a quick scan through if anybody wants to um, take a screenshot I guess um, they're most welcome to see what other people have been saying so far um, I'll just scroll through um, uh, well, you can see the name of the group and you can see the post made by Gian DeVideo Guyon, I don't know how you pronounce his name, sorry, Gian, <laughs> Gian, Gian DeVideo, anyway, um, you'll find it if you want to read through all the comments. So basically what I'm going to be concentrating on is the one that started by Eddie Reese. So we'll open up his picture and say, fascinating, isn't it? Um, I wonder if I can even zoom in. I can do that on this side of the camera. So he's basically saying each one of those latitude lines is a thousand and thirty-five miles. Um, other than the ones on the outside, even I'm struggling to read that. Oh, so over here he's saying. Whoa, this is difficult. Three or four, six, eight, eight ninety nine miles. That's a thousand and two. That's a thousand and thirty seven. That's a thousand and two. That can't quite read. That's seven thirty four. So I think that's the problem in the first place is that because the Gleason's map is a globe projection, what's happened is when they map the world, is they put the continents on to fit a globe so that it made a symmetrical globe so that from North Pole to the equator is symmetrical with the equator to Antarctica. And that's where the problems all start. Maybe that's the equator there. It's not actually marked on this map, but you can tell on the one behind me. We'll get to that eventually. So, um, oh, he's even put some figures there. 899 miles east-west of you in Australia, 899 miles west if you're in China and 1,035 miles north-south, wherever you are. So he's, he's obviously trying to show it's not um, to scale. And that's exactly what we've been saying all along, is that if the Earth was originally mapped to scale, then Australia would still have that elongated stretch southwards that it actually has because they've falsified everything. They've shrunk the globe to make it small so that all of this northern hemisphere is symmetrically the same size as all of this out here. It's the only way they could do it, and they had to shrink, you know, like 70 or 80,000 miles of Antarctica into a, um, into a tiny continent of about 12,000 miles or something, I believe. So, so he's, he's claiming that we've failed to do any proper research, the only way to become a flat earther is ignore the evidence that the Earth is a globe. Well, okay, so that's why I started responding to that when I do that one. Okay, so now we can see, um, I'll try and zoom in a bit to make 
make it bigger on the screen, make it easier to read for everybody. Um, if you think about it, uh, so this is my first response. If you think about it, all any of us have to work with are the maps and knowledge passed down from the ancient superstitious spinning space ballers, so why wouldn't it seem out of whack with reality when we try to make it match what the world is really like? How many contents have you personally charted onto accurate two-scale maps from scratch? But apparently, flat earthers are expected to do so for the entire world, despite not actually having the world's largest navies at our disposal. If the globe wasn't first calculated to hide the lands beyond Antarctica, which we can't reach, and squash the southern lands to make a symmetrical spherical planet matching the inner side of the equator, then the southern continents and distances would comport with reality. So effectively, if flat earthers are wrong about anything, we've only got globe earthers to blame. So naturally, you know, I'm a little bit... Um, I try to elicit responses. So unlike on the phone, you have to go to previous responses. Like on the phone, I only show you the last two. I don't, I don't very rarely do YouTube, uh, Facebook on the laptop these days. So that's why I'm, you have to bear with me. But now we've got there. Eddie Reese says, need some ranch to have that word salad? <laughs> of course you do. Anything with more than two syllables to a word is salad to a glurf. And that's exactly right. Every single time they call something word salad, just because I have a few slightly elongated, complicated sentences, it was all perfectly clear and coherent English. There was no salad. It was all relevant. And anyway, that's how the glyphs respond, is by ridicule and mocking. You're actually going to claim that cartography hasn't progressed since 550 BC and expect me to take you seriously? That's hilarious. So naturally I respond straight away. That um, What makes you think? That's what I'm saying. The charts Cook made in the 1700s are still the basic blueprint of many of today's maps. Mercator's projection still sits on the walls of most classrooms. Many ancient maps strongly resemble the AE projection of Gleason, including modern flight maps since the World War II era. Where the heck are you conjuring up this 550 BC era nonsense from? I specifically mentioned modern navies, not ancient Greek philosophers. Eddie Reese responds... And, you know, like all Globers, he's probably got a fake name and fake account. Let me just move the camera over a little bit. So, see, that's his profile picture. So, how can you take anyone seriously? He uses cartoon characters, but that's his choice. That's what he wants to do. So, who am I to argue? Um, and the word you used was ancient. 1700s is not ancient. Okay, so I will get back to that. In fact, before I do, I'll say, um, before I read... Through Carl's, I will say, more than 100 years ago is ancient to me, champ. An antique car only has to be 20 years old to qualify. Kodachrome film is ancient to me, yet I still had an SLR camera well into the digital age of this century. What you're thinking of is relative, because for you, ancient superstitious beliefs is still your current era. So Carl Becker is the one who I'm going to be addressing in nearly all of these comments. Um... Maps have improved quite a bit over the last 30 years. This is what we use to navigate airliners now. So um, we'll watch this uh, and hope it won't get us a copyright strike. We shouldn't do because it's a thing within a thing. Might even turn the sound right down because it's noise anyway. So this is what he's thinking is how we navigate. Might be talking here. Let's have a listen. No, so it's just video demonstrating. So you can see it's Captain Boeing. A little bit hard to video all this because... So he's saying he's got an app. And I believe he's saying that this app... Um, let's see. So this is in the description. FDP Flight Deck Pro, great application for navigation and airports information. So it's just an app. So it's all CGI. As you can see, obviously he's not trying to claim that this is real. Anyway, I think that's enough of that. It's an app. You can check that out. That's not what this video is about. And again, I'm trying to avoid anything copyright. Because this is important, and I think that this needs to be seen, watched, and understood. Um, so I said to Carl Becker, that's nice. I have a modern Scandinavian Airlines flight, road map, flight route map that resembles every other flat Earth map. So again, you can see. Um, 
Well, let's open it up and have a bit of a look, hey? The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, Archimedes. So this is Scandinavian. So that red line is actually the equator. So that's, you know, they're northern hemisphere based. North Pole is somewhere up around here. Or is it there? I don't know. I thought that might have been Iceland, but they haven't marked out. Well, actually, it would be directly in the centre. So wherever the middle of that red circle is, is the North Pole. So about there. So that's their flight routes. They're all straight lines. You see the ones to Australia. Are, um, they only have the one, and it goes up into Indonesia by the look. Can you zoom? I'm trying to zoom in on the. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's hard working for two cameras. One camera, one laptop. So it's not going to... You get the general impression. These guys don't do many flights to Australia, and the one they do do looks like they go straight to Malaysia, that massive island there. Um, so, yep, to go to the Philippines, you wouldn't use Scandinavian Airlines because they don't have any direct route maps. So this is a, a map you can find, Scandinavian Airlines. Um, I've got several versions of it. This one just happened to be the first one I found, which I shared, which somebody had turned into a meme mentioning the Archimedes bit. Zoom back in a little bit. Um, just as reality constantly confirms. So here's a series of maps. They all look the same, the same layout. That's just the way the world is shaped. They're, they're all pretty well identical. Continents in the same place. That one shows like the water currents or temperature currents as the sun goes around the equator on a daily basis. It's they all match the United Nations, the whole lot. So it's no coincidence that thousands of years of maps all look the same. Um, Eddie Reese comes back and says, in a geological sense, 100 years is not ancient. It's old, but not ancient. Antique is not the same as ancient. They are two different things. Well, ancient encompasses to describe. Well, ancient encompasses to describe. That's a weird way of putting it. Um, aspects of history, antique highlights on describing something made in the past which is collected or kept due to its value or quality. Okay, well, a lot of these words are interchangeable, you know. Just trying to get semantic, which is fine, you know. But sometimes you can get bogged down in semantics. That's not what we're here to do because Carl Becker is what this is all about, even though it started with Eddie Reese. Um, so I'll just um, pause for one sec. Right, yeah, so... Um, I said, mate, you've absolutely overwhelmed me with res Oh, hang on. That can't be right. That's the one I wrote today. That's what I did four hours ago. So so Facebook is bloody... Oh, I put the comments all over the freaking shop. Oh, I hate how they do that. This is the one I just wrote this morning to him, okay? So to tell him what I'm going to do. So why not? It's part of the introduction. Uh, mate, you've over... Absolutely overwhelm me with responses. Ordinarily, when I see a notification, it shows the two most recent responses only. Refreshing the entire page and wading through them all, I understand your frustration as I've missed like 70% or more of them, each one a detailed subject in its own right. What I'm going to d try and do, time permitting, which is what I'm doing now, is make a video response. I can say a lot more and demonstrate a lot more, much more economically, time-wise, than I can by typing and sharing an image or link one at a time. There's hours and hours of work to address it all, and I believe in being thorough. So this could take a while, so long as you now make a concerted effort to stop responding. <laughs> if, I, if only I could type in bold on Facebook, because he's been hammering me with responses, which is fine. I've addressed quite a lot, but I've realised now I've missed heaps and heaps the point of making this video. I'm currently not even sure the best way to make the video, so this is my experiment. Maybe opening Facebook on my laptop, which I'm doing, filming the screen. They'll use my whiteboard as I'm not a graphics person or even amateur, <laughs> let alone expert. But as a logician, I will respond to as much as I can. 
Meanwhile, I thank you for your patience and implore you to watch this short journey of Owen Benjamin, who swore he'd never be a flat earth person as he finally admitted the earth is indeed flat. He's a strong online personality with a lot of followers and many people move to flat earth as a result. Just watch. So this is Robot Polisher. He's freaking brilliant. Strongly recommend you subscribe to this guy, Robot Polisher. There's no way you're going to be convinced. No, no one has ever been convinced. So we're going to debate the cinema they, they, they have to really find it within themselves and, and do some deep... Oh, no, I understand. Deep what, I'm, what I'm telling you is... Soul searching. You will figure it out one day. I mean, everybody does eventually. The Earth isn't flat. There's no fucking way the Earth is flat. This is a lot harder than I expected, proving that the Earth is round. It's fucking weird. It is, it is way, way, way harder. And dude, I'm telling you, it's fucked up. I know the Earth is round. This is like, this is a fucking nightmare. This is literally a nightmare trying to fucking disprove this thing. The Earth is not flat. That's fucking psychotic. I, I really, really don't want to believe the Earth is flat, guys. Fuck! This is so fucking depressing. I can't be a flat earth person. This is... Can't, this can't be a reality. I still believe the earth is a sphere. I'm just having a very hard time proving it. Flat earth sounds completely insane still to me. I can't wrap my brain around it, but I'm starting to think that I may be at the edge of my own uh, ability to shatter what I think. I'm open to it. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. The Earth may be flat. I'm dead serious. I can't imagine the Earth being flat. I think that's insane. I, that, to me, is so unnatural. God damn it. The Earth is clearly not a fucking spinning ball. <laughs> How the fuck are we supposed to handle all of this? I get it. I'm having a hard time with all of it. Oh, fucking stupid. If the earth is flat. <laughs> it's all a lie. I'm not a quote-unquote flat earther. I just find it very interesting. I just think that's very interesting. I think the fuck is flat. I give a fuck. I'm not buying a lot of this shit anymore, guys. I don't know if it's flat or not, but it's not moving. I don't think it's spinning for shit. Every instinct of my body thinks it's a globe spinning through space because I've been told that my whole life so many times. That being said, none of that makes any sense. All right. There's no evidence that the earth is a globe. None. It's not even that it's like people being angry. It's people desperately hanging on to a lie. It's so sad. The despair that people feel because of these lies is unbelievable. And the crazy thing is how many people are so beaten down that they're like, don't ask that question. When someone first proposed Flat Earth to me, I said that they were insane. I get it. I used to go Flat Earthers retards, like a ton. Like I would have lost it. Like average person thinks they're standing on a spinning ball. Right now, 2022, they think they're standing on a ball that's spinning 1,000 miles an hour in infinite blackness. They're literally like, I'm standing on a spinning ball right now. It's so fucking stupid. Most globe people have never thought about anything. They're just like, y'all saw... Yikes, I hope I um, didn't just get myself a strike there because sometimes if you don't edit out certain words... um can get your videos taken down, but you know, it's not my video. <laughs> I'm just sort of filming somebody else's making commentary on it. Um, I'll try and keep it going. It's it's worth the listen. Really worth the listen. Oh, Barry Stoppard. I mean, you can do the math, guys. The math is right there. Everyone's, prove you're on a flat plane. Okay, there it is. It's right there. That's the flat, not moving plane. How about you prove you're on a spinning ball? So is ignorance bliss? No. Sometimes I wish I could go back. I don't. I mean, I've enjoyed my journey. There are no former flat earthers. None. Not one. Nobody's ever seen what the actual shape of the earth is. And then they're like, you know what? Neil deGrasse Tyson really does give me a good argument. Because it's literally ridiculous. I, I've, I've heard all your dumb arguments. We were raised with this bullshit. Elementary school, middle school, high school, college, all of it. It's bullshit. 
It's retarded. It is a Don't lie. say that, man. You have to be <laughs> fucking retarded. Oh, this yeah, yeah. To not see that no one played golf on the moon and broke the technology and can't return. Those are the childlike lies of a psychopath, okay? That's not even close to a sophisticated lie. <laughs> not even close. What's seen as crazy is just looking around and saying, okay, my eyes tell me this is not a curve. Why wouldn't someone trust their eyes and their ears and their hands and their nose and their mouth and their logic? I think that there's things in the <laughs> sky moving over us. Yes. My logic. Yes, I do. They have drones, balloons, huge oh, network logic. up there. But do I think they're going 15,000 miles an hour so they fall with the gravity of the earth and they stay there for decades without needing any maintenance or running into space junk or any particles and destroying them and their fragile tech just keeps working and broadcasting things? No, no, of course not. That's retarded. That's, that's, it there. that's that word again. Anyway, so... That's Owen Benjamin's trip. He realised that the Earth is flat. So I put that up there to, just to let him know. So this one was four hours earlier. Um, boy, I believe. Yeah. So all the comments have disappeared. That's, But I clicked on all comments, right? No, I have at the top. All comments. So they're not all showing at all. It's not even showing on the side of my bloody screen. Top comments, most comments, all comments. Surely. So um, obviously Facebook is playing silly buggers here. Because there's way more comments. Oh, I can read his ones there too, obviously, because they're the relevant ones from this morning. He says, great, I'm glad you've now got them all. Well, I thought I did. That's how I was going to make a video of them. Um, Facebook has decided not to allow me, so I might just keep this to a half-hour version and see what I can do about that, because I'll have to start videoing the phone instead where I do see the comments just by clicking on reply, uh, view all. Um, please read them and watch the Adiru video, A-D-I-R-U video from the manufacturer and the Jefferson navigation tool video which my colleague on the flight deck of the 747-400F. I'll be here when you're ready to continue and have civil debate. So we've had a civil debate most of the time. We've both been a little bit, how do you do? Like because we both sort of think the other person is wrong. And he says he watched the video all the way through. The problem is that you don't directly work with the rotating spherical Earth every day or don't have the baseline physics knowledge to understand the mechanics of a rotating spherical Earth you can be persuaded to believe in flat Earth. When you rely on a rotating spherical Earth for navigation on a daily basis and it works, then you know the Earth is a rotating sphere. When you also try to produce a course and direction on a flat earth map and it does not match reality, you tend not to believe in flat earth and it confirms the spherical earth. Rightio, so let's get down to the nuts and bolts of that little comment. Is <laughs> Now I can't read it. I don't know why I want to look at myself. Um, <laughs> so I can read it without glasses. Because I can see well up close. I can't see well in the distance. Um, that if you don't directly work with a rotating spherical Earth every day, or don't have the baseline physics knowledge to understand the mechanics of a rotating spherical Earth, then you can be persuaded to believe in flat Earth. And I will address that because that's why I became a flat Earther, because I do understand physics very well. You know, I'm not an engineer. You don't have to be an engineer to understand physics. You know? A child understands physics the first time they drop something heavy on their foot. You soon learn that anything of weight and mass will drop through the medium of air until it's resisted by something of sufficient density to arrest it. In case if it's your foot, that hurts like buggery. So you soon learn some pretty basic physics um, when you go into the stage of being a pilot. You're not really the guy creating the plane either. You have to trust the engineers who created the plane, who created the engines, who created the wings and the body and the compression 
sort of the pressurized chamber that everybody sits within and all the gears and levers you know but you know it's all been engineered by somebody who doesn't necessarily even have to understand that to be the pilot so the pilot develops this huge ego believes they understand everything we do the navigation we put in the flight plan we know well we've been told it's a spinning space pool even though there are now hundreds if not thousands of pilots who have stepped forward and admitted that they never take into account the motion of the earth they never take into account the curvature of the earth and in very fact when they look back at their first training manual one of the first things you're told about flight is you treat the earth as though it is stationary uh, flat and non-rotating that is the very basics now i know because in my journey as a, the words slowly getting out how I first became a flat earther is that my father-in-law, the grandfather of my three awesome now adult children, he was a merchant sea captain his whole life. You know, he had an amateur pilot's license. On his holidays, he'd take his trailer sailor, uh, trailer sailor up the Mile River to the Great Lakes where I used to live. And his family lived across the Port Stevens where I lived on the north side, they lived on the south side, so he was closer to his... Uh, Steve adoring work that he did in Newcastle for some time and that's how I got to meet his daughter went to the same high school didn't really know each other so much in high school but afterwards three mutual friends I got to meet her so anyway a bit of my background is I knew the guy well we went camping with his family you know, we went up in his trailer sailor up to the lakes at times and I eventually married his daughter had children and so after some years he was when he went back to being a merchant sea captain, which is where he started his career at and spent the last 10 or so, 15 years, also being a merchant sea captain, they moved up to where I'd moved, which is I'd moved to Byron Bay and lived in Bangalore for 15 years, lived in surrounding areas ever since. Uh, they moved to a place called Ocean Shores, which is just half an hour's drive up the road. That's so basically a suburb of Byron Bay these days. And we would visit regularly, we'd take the grandchildren up. You know, we'd do it every Christmas and Easter and just the odd weekend here and there. And his stories were fascinating. He was a great storyteller. He'd tell me about, you know, driving or <laughs> captaining giant ships, massive things in all these different ports around China. And he said, you know, as they go further and further up these massive rivers, because the water's fresher, the things sit lower into the water. He just had some fascinating stories. Um, he told me about going over the Panama Canal, and I was like, wow, because they're, they're quite narrow. They're just wide enough to accommodate the ships. They're sort of built to match the Panama Canal. They can make them longer, but not wider. Um, and yeah, the way the locks work, highly interesting. And he says, you know, well, it's all topog topographical, it's easier to build the locks, engineer them into topography, than it is to do what they did at the Suez Canal, which is a much longer canal, 100 miles long. It's, or um, 100 plus. It's all flat and level. So they didn't have to engineer any locks into it. And that was one of his go-to proofs after he'd retired, sitting having coffee one morning, and he says to me that he, he it's obviously been burning on him wanting to tell somebody for a long time. And he says that, I genuinely believe the earth is flat. I just looked at him and said, what do you mean? Everyone knows it's a ball. It's just nonsense. Okay? But it was the first time I'd really ever heard somebody say it out loud to me. And I was like, that is bizarre. I couldn't, couldn't fathom it. You know, all I'm thinking of is I'm thinking of all the water on the ball. <laughs> Whereas really, it's the opposite. The water on the ball should be what's flowing off and falling off. But all I'm thinking of is that's what's going to happen on a flat earth. Because obviously I was brought up with the heliocentric lie. So, um, yeah, he, he was adamant. says it's flat. And I said, but that makes no sense. It is, and the best proof he got, could offer was actually the Suez Canal. He said it's over 100 miles long and it's flat and level the whole way. And so automatically my thinking is, well, that's too big to see curvature over just 100 miles. How could you expect to see curvature over 100 miles? You know, that's, it's it's way too big. Like, it's huge. But when you do the maths and you break it down, 
which is what many flat earthers have subsequently done, and what, you know, finally convinced me that it is flat, is that the maths do not match the observations. A 25,000 mile circumference ball has a curvature rate equivalent of 8 inches for the first mile and then 8 inches for the mile squared, which rapidly increases the amount of curvature drop that should exist. So it's a big part of this um, series of videos I'm going to be making. I'm going to pump out as many as I can today because it's a it was raining this morning. It's actually now got a little bit sunny, but it's not a. It's a winter's day. It's coming close to our winter solstice, so I'm, I'm just going to do what I can, make as many videos as I can to go through this post. I've just got to find a way to um, to get these comments back. So I'll be back. Okay, so here I'm just going to play a video. This is on my Facebook channel why when you flip a globe over it says not for educational use but decorative purposes only it's because not only would you never get to where you're going but if you did you would add miles upon miles upon miles on your trip i want you to look at the cbs on, american school of air map used in 1943 go bigger for flight school oh, God. and i want you to look at this here is a scale People always say, where's your flat earth map with a scale? Well, here it is. Not only does it have a scale, but it has this funny looking white border with all this outlined mapped terrain. What could that be? What could that be, I wonder? Not that continent at the bottom of the globe, something else that surrounds it. Now I want you to look at this map, and I want you to look at New York, and I want you to look at the path you would take from New York to Moscow. Okay, let's take a closer look. New York to Moscow, how's that going to look on this map? Let's draw a line right straight across. And notice how it's going to cut through Greenland. Now let's look at what the flight path they show us actually looks like. So when you pull up the actual flight path, this is what it looks like. They make it so it arcs up to Greenland and then down to Moscow. And notice the distance is actually shorter on their curved line compared to this one, if you were to just go straight from New York to Moscow. Why would that be longer? Think about that. Again, on the flat earth map, that's an actual map that flight schools used to use. Right through Greenland, and I wanna show you why their straight line is actually a longer distance because this is what their straight line actually is on a real map. <laughs> the map pilots use the flat earth map. It adds distance because you go a little curve away from it to come back versus going straight across. Now I just want to give you another example of how their curved flight paths from LA to Japan, why would we do that? Great circle I'll show you. Because on the flat earth map, LA to Japan is actually an exactly straight line. You just fly across, and I want you to notice, where do they cut through? Alaska, and just on the edge of Russia here. Let's go back and look. Look again. LA, through Alaska, Alaska. just Russia. to the tip across <laughs> Russia, and down to Japan. Now is it making sense? Oh, and if you don't believe me, maybe you'll take these guys' word for it. How long have you been a pilot for? 43 years. Wow. Uh, what shape is the planet? Flat. Did you notice any curvature while we were up there? Curvature? No. No? There's no, no curvature? It's just all flat. I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. I've been flying. Yeah. I've come to the conclu conclusion. Yeah. There is no curvature. I never allow for curvature. There's no way there's curvature. We're round and flat, aren't we? Definitely. Yep. We are, aren't we? Flat as a pancake, you, mate. Flat as a pancake. <laughs> we so, and it, the other ring is south. Yeah. And, and, and so north must be in the middle, correct? That Possibly. Could, that yeah. would be the only way that a yeah. magnetic compass would... So, so what the, the glyphs say when they see this sort of thing, they say, oh yeah, the pilots are just entertaining the idiots. That's, that's actually how they excuse themselves. You know, they, they do that all the time. And I have no doubt that 
will probably come up in this thread. You know, it's hard to say because I do participate on quite a few over the time and I get told it so often that I don't know if Carl actually does that on this, but we'll find out. I'm pretty sure he does. Works on a flat plane. Might be on something there. Yeah, but, but you're not having me on. No, we're, no, no, we're, we're round and flat, aren't no, it's we? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. No worries. You made my day. <laughs> so again, this is on there because it has to be. Otherwise, <laughs> everyone would be getting lost. It is everyone. Photoshop. But it has and the be. next time someone says, show me a flat earth map with scale and a key, take them to the CBS American School of Air Map and show them. Exactly this. like all the other maps have been shown. But as always, I know this is just a fake map from 1940s. They did these things to be funny. There was no point of this. And all this terrain out here, that's really just Antarctica at the bottom that they just stretched out in a circle. Even though they've been doing it for hundreds of years. All for entertainment purposes, of course. All for entertainment purposes, of course. They're legendary. I'll have to, I'm pretty sure I've subbed to this guy, but if I haven't, or followed, whatever, on TikTok I will. So um, that's that. Uh, well, yeah, here it is. Yoda, this guy. I don't know why I'm including him in my video. He's an idiot. Tried to send me a friend request the other day after just sort of saying a whole heap of shit on some other thread somewhere else. Um, what does he say here? I'll have to move my camera over because crap on the screen hides it from me. Wow, look at some idiot with a video account blowing all their minds with his cutting edge wisdom. That's just regurgitated from other social media fake disinfo pages. And yet, look at him. Neil Yoda is a cartoon character as well. I'm not going to click on his profile, of course, but. Gee, looks so real. He's friends with Jaron Campanella and Stephanie B, so he can't be too bad, but he's trying to friend the Glurfs so he can get himself some notoriety. Dishonestly, uh, why does that always happen? Well, we'll just <laughs> dishonestly calling 2D map projections flat Earth maps because it's a flat piece of paper and it means Earth itself is flat. It's called eating the menu fallacy category area. So he seems to know the few of the fallacies. You'd have a good discussion with Witset. I'm not into the fallacies. What the? F so now those responses aren't even going to show either. Well, that's just fucking great. <laughs> Four replies, come on, man. So Facebook is hiding comments. That's frustrating. What if I click on comments? Will they show then? Are most relevant? The responses aren't even relevant. Or comments, come on. Ah, uh, where we go. Oh, wow. Profound wisdom from the guy who eats the cornflakes box. <laughs> that was, a, yeah, a little bit uncalled for, but uh, he looks like he eats cornflakes boxes. No, I've never eaten any cornflake boxes. Totally lame. That's all you got. It's all your comment is worthy of. And so he responded again, and therefore all you are capable of. Well, no. Calling some bloke an idiot with a video account blowing all our minds when that wasn't even the purpose. It was just showing us how the roots work on the flat earth and how they appear the way the pilots think that they work on their globe. So, yeah, it's a clown comment. So he gets what he gets. Um, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this one short. Um, I don't know what's going on with Facebook. I've tried refreshing. I've tried going through them all again. As you can see, these were a week ago, a week ago. The comment started a week ago. It goes from week, week, week. And there's been a whole week of multiple discussions every day. And it jumps from that one to that one. Four hours. And no amount of refreshing, no clicking on all comments brings it back into view. So, um... This will be part one. There'll be more once I work out how to get these comments up. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.